In this video, we're going to talk about layers. And I don't necessarily mean the object layers over here in this panel. I'm talking about layers of actual embroidery thickness. If you have several layers on top of each other, you could actually get so thick you start breaking threads and could actually start breaking needles if you have enough. So I made this little project to show you how to fix that. I have two ways to fix that. One is the long way, which makes a better result. The other way is a shorter, much easier way. Depending on your project, may or may not work because the results are not quite as good. And I just did a couple of just random shapes, stacked them on top of each other. I have... I have five layers, and all five layers are layers of stitching. You really don't want, and they're all five are fill. You really don't want more than one fill. You need to try to avoid having more than one fill. You can get away with one fill on top of another. But ideally, you want only one fill, and you can have some straight stitching or satin stitching on top of that fill to shooting for one fill one fill layer in the in your embroidery piece i've already taken all these shapes converted them object to path did a troubleshoot it did good i've already did the preview here's the preview 59,510 stitches and i wrote that number down It'll go down, probably not a lot, but it'll go down some when we get done getting rid of all those layers of stitchings. Then I wrote it down because I won't remember that. I'm quite certain. I don't know why I did that. These layers are fill layers on top of fill layer on top of fill layer. And each one of those as your machine embroiders them, it's having to needle through ever thickening layers. It's not good for the machine, not good for the needle. It wastes thread, granted, not a lot, but it'll waste a couple thousand stitches. We don't want that. So here's the easy way. No, here's the hard way, but the proper way. And this is this deals with path and difference. When you're doing difference, whatever object you difference out will go away. Let me explain. So I'm going to unsee all of these except for the bottom two. Since this one is only going to stitch over the top of the next one down, Keep in mind, in your objects layer, your machine will stitch bottom up. So this will be the first one to stitch. Followed by this one, which will stitch on top of that first one. So we want to cut this shape away from that first one. So that it leaves a big square hole to where the square will be stitched straight onto our fabric. That's what we want. So we do this by duplicating this object. Duplicate, and once you duplicate, the duplicated layer is already selected. So now I want to select the bottommost layer to difference out that duplicated layer. I hope this makes sense. Path, difference. Did I say duplicate out? No, I said difference out. Okay. So now if we if we if we uh, hide the square now we have a big square cut out of our our bottommost layer. That's what we want. Now we have to do that for every single one of them for each one on top. Yeah. So we're going to hide the square since we just did it. We're going to make the next one up visible. We want to do the same thing with this one. 
we're going to highlight that one. I'm going to shortcut control D to duplicate. It's already highlighted. So I'm just going to control press control and left click the bottom most object. Once again, do difference. It's also control and minus. So now when we unsight that one, you can see those shapes cut out of the bottom most layer. Next one up, same thing. Select it, control D, select the bottom one, control minus. Okay. And last but not least, this one, control D, select that bottom most node. I say node because I do programming in Godot that uses nodes. Sometimes I confuse myself. Control minus to difference out. And now that one's gone. Awesome. Okay, now we can hide that bottom one. Now we're going to do the same thing for the square. The one above it not the one below it. So the one above it is that. Control D. Select our square. Control minus. Hide that. There it's cut out of our square. Perfect. Same thing with this one. Control D. Select our square. Control minus. Perfect. Control D for duplicate. Control left click to multi select. Control minus shortcut for difference. Square's done. Now the next one up. And the next one above that needs to be differenced out. So click it. Duplicate with Control D. Select that layer. Control minus. Now that one's perfect. And then the one above it, select it, control D, select. Okay, has that one and then select that one. Control minus. You gotta you got a lot of layers. This can get complicated real quick. And that one's done. Now the one above it, which only has one above it which is that one control D just like that one control minus so now everything should be a, a single layer beautiful so now we have our single layer so now just for giggles, I'm going to go ahead and do a troubleshoot because that's what I do almost all the time. It's the easiest way to know if you've got something wrong. Exactly. Lots of, lots of, lots of little pointers. So that's fine. Delete that troubleshoot layer. Go to our fill and stroke. Go no objects. Select all of the objects. Make sure that is selected. Okay, it is. So we'll go to extensions, ink stitch, fill tools, break apart. Hit apply. Objects. Yep, we have a lot of objects now. And then I want to select all. Pushed. I clicked the topmost one. Come down to the bottom. Hold your left shift button down click will select all of them you can also cheat by just click and drag across everything and that will also select everything go into ink stitch troubleshoot clean up document sometimes this removes your entire art piece i've done that control z or control z is your friend that will undo anything that you just did. It's my friend. <laughs> okay. So we should have a troubleshoot again. So much easier than trying to do something and then trying to figure out why it's not doing the something. Just 
go ahead and troubleshoot it first. So all shapes are valid. Ink stitch, visualize, visualize. Okay, now we have 43,507, which is a difference of three, zero, zero, six, and one, 16,003, 16,003 less stitches, fewer stitches. So let's speed this up. Let's slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. So now you can see that nothing is stitching in the center. Nothing is going to stitch over the top of anything else. That's exactly what we needed it to do. Now that the topmost piece is stitching, now it's going to fill out the center. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the shortcut version that doesn't turn out quite as good. This is pretty. It doesn't, it's close. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. But I need to start over. So, I'm going to bring up a new one. This is, this is the original that I had saved. There's my original that's got all the overlapping overlays. And while we're in here, I'm going to close that one out. Not save. Okay. So this is our original. This one has all the layers over the top of each layer. And you can see that by me doing this. Layers over the top of layers. This is the shortcut version. I'm going to export as a PNG. And we're going to save it. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to import that PNG. Sounds odd, doesn't it? But wait. Import the PNG. And then do trace, bit, trace bitmap, multiple scan, switch to color. Click the colors up a few times, like maybe 14. I'm going to hit apply. Close that out. Go to our objects layers. Delete the image that we brought in. And this is what we have left. Not quite as good, but close. And I'm going to select the object, the item. Go to Ink Stitch, do Fill Tools, Break Apart Fill Objects, hit Apply. Close. Leave it highlighted, Ink Stitch, Troubleshoot, Clean Up Document, hit Apply. Six elements removed. Still looks good. Extensions, Ink Stitch, Troubleshoot, Troubleshoot Objects. All shapes are valid. Ink stitch, extensions, ink stitch, simulate. Alrighty. 63,105 stitches. That's actually more than we originally had. That's interesting. Not sure why that is the case. But as we go through this, you'll see that there is, I went way too fast. Okay, you'll see that there isn't play. That there's no layers underneath layers. It's keeping this center cleaned out until that, that very last layer goes down. But you also see that there's a lot of switchbacks to colors. So this would be a good one to join colors on. And as it stitches out, that last few stitches, it will fill in the center. That is because a PNG does not keep layers. When you save 
and something with layers like an SVG, PNG ignores whatever is underneath anything else. It will only keep what is sticking out and visible. So the, like the purple line here, the only part that's visible is the part that's sticking out. That's the only thing that PNG keeps. So what I would recommend doing on this one, if you're going to do it this way, select one of the colors and then do uh, edit, select same, fill color, and then group. And whatever that color is, again, select same, fill color, and group. This will make it sure that you only have to use, you only have to put this color thread in once. It will stitch everything that is this color, and then it will move on to the next grouping of colors. That's exactly what we're doing. And I think that's only got one color. What color is that? Okay. What color is that? Oh, that's why it's got so many threads, because it's doing a white background. I didn't even think about that. Delete that nasty old white background. Shoo. Shoo. Okay. Let's go back to grouping. And now I don't know how many stitches it's got, but we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, select same. Fill color. Group. Select same, fill color, and group. Lord, I mean, we got there. All right. Select same, fill color, and group. I don't have it over there, do I? Okay. Select same, fill color, and group. My goodness. Shouldn't have that many left. Select same. Fill color and group. Red. Red. Okay. Select same. We'll just continue on. Fill color and group. Boom. That was it. All right. So now it'll do that fill color. And only that fill color, so you only have to switch out stitches or switch out thread colors once. Let's do another uh, visualize. I want to see how many stitches we have now that we cut out that background. And and that's also another thing to keep in mind is that anytime you do uh, an import. And then convert bitmap. You'll, you'll always, especially with a PNG, you'll always have that white background. Yeah, get rid of that white background. Now I have 45,000 stitches, which is real close to what we had after we fixed the original. It's a few more, but not many. We have 43,500 compared to 45,265. Not, not much difference. Let's get this on through. Looks good, looks good. So there's your two ways of getting rid of all those, the thickness of layers on your embroidery piece. It's very important that it's not, not too thick. It's If your machine does actually stitch it, it's going to be uncomfortable to wear. It's probably going to break threads. It's probably even going to break needles if you have it really thick. So that's it. Thanks for watching.